Once you get your first job as a UX designer, there are a few things that you can do to stand out and get on the fast track to being promoted and making more money. So I'm gonna give you the top four things that I've discovered throughout my career that make promotions happen more quickly. These things make the most difference going from a junior level to a mid-level. So these tips are actually meant to make you emulate the characteristics of a designer who is a mid-level to make it undeniable that you're ready for that promotion. The first thing is to come up with multiple solutions and options for every one of your design tasks. Whenever you get an assignment, it will go a long way with your team if you think about the problem from a few different angles and then come up with a few different versions of your designs that could all solve the problem in different ways. So when you do this and you present those options to the team, it really helps the team to collaborate to come up with better designs overall. Whenever I come up with multiple versions of a design and then go into a meeting to present them, it always leads to higher quality discussions and feedback. So when the participants of the meeting are able to see multiple options laid out in front of them, it gets everybody to think more creatively and suggest better ideas for how to improve those designs on all the future iterations. When you come into meetings with multiple options, it also makes the team appreciate your work more because it shows them that you went above and beyond to come up with the best design possible. I'll show a quick example of how I did this uh, when I was designing a search feature at my last job. So with this particular feature, there was a lot of room for creativity. We knew that there were a few must-haves in this feature. Um, like we wanted a category selector and we wanted auto-filled results in this search experience, but the rest was kind of up in the air. So I came up with multiple concepts here and I'll show the top three that I presented in a review with our product team. So each one of these has different UI, UX, and interaction details. I came up with this option here, which is a more simple dropdown divided by categories. I came up with this one, which is a more like full screen, uh, modal based search experience. And this one, that is a drop down that opens from the top of the screen. This is just meant to show you that these different options that you can, can come up with um, can oftentimes be very different from one another. And the second thing is to think through all of the edge cases of your design before presenting them to your team. For those of you who don't know, an edge case is an uncommon way that a user could uh, interact with a feature or a component. So each edge case has to have some sort of um, like solution for it or else it could break the experience for the user. So when you're designing something, think through everything that could potentially happen with the design on the screen and how that could go wrong and how that could potentially um, affect something that's in another part of the app or website that you're working on. When you're presenting your work to your team, you should either bring up what will happen when an edge case occurs on your own, or at least have an answer if somebody else brings up an edge case. I'll give another quick example of how to do this uh, by showing some work that I was doing at my previous job. So this particular feature here is a compare feature. So the user can choose from a list of census tracts, click the compare button, which will then add it to the compare drawer at the bottom of the page. From there, they can go to a compare chart. So here's a few quick edge cases that I would think about on this particular page. So we specify that the user can only add 20 census tracks here, uh, but then what would happen if they try to add more than 20? Another thing is we have this clear all button on the page, but what would happen if the user tried to remove just one census track at a, at a time? Would we have um, functionality for that? Um, what would happen if the user tried to go to another page? Um, would these comparison selections be saved somewhere? Like what would, what would happen to the drawer? Um, so there's definitely more than that, that that I would think of, but that's just a few ideas just to, to kind of start getting you thinking about some of these things. And the third thing that I have is try to never receive the same constructive feedback more than once. At most jobs, you're gonna have a bi-weekly one-on-one -on -one with your manager. So at that meeting, they're gonna give you some feedback about things that you're doing well and things that you can improve on. So as soon as they tell you what you can improve on, take that very seriously and make sure to completely fix that going forward. You might even go as far as writing that thing to improve on on a sticky note and then putting it next to your computer. 
So then as you're going throughout your day, just constantly think about that thing that you're trying to improve on and think about whether you're making progress on it. So after you've been working on that thing for a few weeks and you have your next one-on-one -on -one with your manager, tell them that you've been working on that particular thing and ask them for some more feedback about whether you have improved on that in that particular area. Usually when someone's being considered for a promotion, a big thing that would make that promotion not go through is some sort of shortcoming in their performance. But if you've been working with your manager to improve on all of these shortcomings and you're checking in on your progress, on the things that you need to improve on, and you've shown that you've overcome those things over time, it removes any doubt that you're ready for that next promotion. And the fourth thing is to do things that will help the team or the product that were not asked of you. On any team, there's always gonna be something that you can do beyond your usual day-to-day -day responsibilities that can really add a lot of value to that team. So it could be something like coming up with a new idea for how to improve a feature, maybe researching and suggesting a new Figma plugin, maybe figuring out a new way of organizing Figma files that can make things easier to find. So you should occasionally be coming up with ideas like this bringing them to your manager and then asking them if you if they would like you to take it on as a little side project. If your manager likes the idea and wants you to do it, then get that thing done very quickly to show that you really took it seriously and to really show that you follow through with those initiatives. If you're doing things like this regularly that show that you have a vision for how to improve things even further, it works as hard evidence that you're thinking more like a mid-level designer. So one of the key differences between a junior and mid-level is that the mid-level designer is going to have that vision and be able to work with more autonomy. But if you're doing that as a junior designer, it just means that you're ready for that promotion to get to mid-level. That's everything that I have on the list today. So if you're doing these things regularly, it's going to put you ahead of most junior designers out there. And then it's, it's going to be undeniable to your team that you're ready for that promotion very quickly. So thank you for watching. And if you have any questions on this topic, please leave them in the comments below. And also make sure to subscribe because I'm gonna be coming out with weekly videos that are meant to help designers who are early in their career.